or you run the string all the way down the, <clears throat> the stock and it grabs a hold of that pin. And when you pull the string, it forces this whole assembly back. <clears throat> this weight stack here is really easy to add more weight to because it's just a bunch of washers. Um, <clears throat> and since all the forces are compressive around this back rim, um, it can take a beating and it's totally fine. So I, I really kind of like this. Right now, this is my sear face. It's just plastic. <clears throat> um, I don't know if I need to fix that or like, you know, put a, a washer over it or something to give it more rigidity, but um, this is 100% infill PLA and it's working so far. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't see a serious failure mode, at least with the way this is made right now. Um, so, <clears throat> this is kind of roughly how it all, all goes together. I can show you, let me show you the assembly real quick. So you can see that all of that goes uh, inside the stock. There we go. Cool. So this is what the striker looks like when it's kind of uh, in position anyway. Um, it comes out right there, um, and the face of it sits right on the back of that bushing. Um, so when it, when it goes forward with that force, it, this whole face here takes all of that, takes all of that, and uh, you know, it's really not that big of a deal. So all the, the washers sit on the back there, and bang, that's it. Now the, the trick of this is, there's only so much I can pull it back before it falls out of that hole. Um, and that's a, that's a tuning thing I need to work on um, and setting the right length. I could probably use very slightly more firing pin there. Um, and it would be much less of a problem. But I'll have to tune that and uh, play around with just where that rod goes through. Just the the position of it, um, but uh, that's what it looks like. So I want to go into a little more detail on the uh, the spring or the sorry the string guide. Uh, this thing goes in the uh, back end of the T, just fits up in there like that. Um, and the idea here is that this bottom rim keeps it from pulling through. Um, and there's two pins in here to guide. To, to redirect the string so it's not getting all chewed up on the uh, the T-body and to drastically reduce the friction. So there's, this is just a, a stopper knot on the end there. And all it does is come up and over. You can see this, this uh, slot here. It runs all the way. That's basically what it looks like. It goes all the way down to there. Um, and then there's just a little square hole basically going up to meet it. But uh, So this comes over the top. And these two strings diverge here um, in their own directions. And uh, so this one just comes up and over the plastic. There's nothing guiding it because it's not moving. Um, and then I have, you know, it goes down and loops around. And uh, we come back and loop around that pin.
So that, that redirects the string going this way to that way, 90 degrees. And we do the same thing up here from going that way to back that way. So this, yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. We pull that and uh, pull all that friction out of there. So this is just paracord. Um, but anyway, you can see they, it pops out right there. And that's pretty much all there is to that. All right, so we're gonna do another test today. So I've got this striker I've designed with the fancy string cocking mechanism. Um, and right now it is charged. You can see our test pin there. Um, and ready. And I have a cut shell, which is just a primer in there. So we're gonna snug this up and do a test. Alright, so that's nice and loose. Fuck. It did push it out though, that was interesting. So I need something to pull that back, I guess. Hmm. It didn't do it either.